Hello again everybody. Uh, this week we're going to have a go at painting um, a young bird, a young blue tit in the garden. Uh, we're getting them into the garden uh, all the time at the moment so I thought uh, this would be rather nice. Uh, when you're looking at painting the young birds they tend to have uh, slightly more subtle plumage than the uh, mature birds so I'm going to try and go with some gentle soft colours um, for this. Um, and set it against a contrasting background. So I'm actually going to do the background a little bit differently to the reference that I'm using in order to make the bird stand out. And I'm also going to tinker around a little bit with what the bird's sitting on um, because my bird is sitting on the rim of a hanging feeder but I'm actually just going to have the rim of the feeder in there and leave the chain out because it cuts across the side of the bird's face. So I'm going to tinker around a little bit with the composition but basically the bird itself is going to be painted as per the reference. Um, all I've done in advance is very very lightly sketch the basic outline uh, with a 2B pencil um, and what you can probably see is some really really faint pencil lines just to indicate where the markings change. I haven't drawn that in very heavily at all because I don't want that to show through. The bird's fairly light coloured so I don't want heavy pencil work. I have also now you don't have to do this but because I want a tiny bit of fluff where colour goes light against dark I've put a tiny bit of masking fluid just here and there to retain some white or almost white feathers. Now there is actually a patch of very light feathers here but it's a large patch so I don't have to bother masking those out but I've done that in advance that is all dry. So the first thing I'm going to be concentrating on in a moment is the background but what I have done is I have experimented in advance and I have done my colour mixing um, and what I have decided to do is because the bird's a young bird everything's fairly muted so I've chosen uh, two yellows, I've used um, a lemon yellow with a lot of water, this is quite an opaque colour so I'm going to use it sparingly, fairly diluted um, and then a, a warmer yellow. Now I've chosen to use um, an Oriolin, uh, but a Gamboge would work. You could use a, um, a cadmium yellow or a cadmium yellow pale. Um, so I've got two tones of yellow, which I'll be dropping in. And then I've experimented. I've used a slightly different blue, an Indanthrodine. It's fairly similar to cobalt blue, but just doesn't granulate like cobalt blue. So um, a not too light a blue is what you're looking for. So you could try um, uh, ultramarine or French ultramarine, cobalt blue. I've gone from it for indanthrodine um, and I've combined it because I want the yellows to be more muted. I've combined it with raw sienna to get these um, uh, more subtle uh, selection of greens uh, that are the shadowed side of the, um, the yellow, if you like. Um, I've also tried out a Windsor blue with gamboge and a little bit of burnt sienna where the green goes slightly brighter. Then I needed something um, a little bit deeper. I'm not sure that this is a, a, a right colour on its own but dropped in with one of the others. I've tried raw sienna in Dadrodine and then a little bit of transparent orange to warm the colour. Then uh, there are areas of sort of very blue-grey, so that I've used the Indanthrodine and Neutral. Uh, so basically a blue and a grey mixed together. Watered that down and put a little bit of that with one of my green mixes because the top of the bird's head um, is very subtle. So um, that's what I've used. So that's my, just my experiments and that's what I've gone with. But obviously you just swap colours in and out. Now that the masking fluid has dried, I'm ready to concentrate on the background first. So I have mixed up rather large pools of colour. I've got some yellow to drop into the background. I've mixed a really quite strong mid-green. It needs a stir up. Um, it's actually a bit lighter than it looks in the palette. And then I've also got some very dark green mixed um, to uh, ready to drop in. I want the whole background to be done wet in wet. So uh, what I want to do to extend the amount of time that I've got one option would be to wet the background with uh, a yellow, which I could do, or just to go round the whole bird with clean water, and that's the option I'm going to take. So I'm loading my size 16 brush, or size 14, something really big, and going round the bird, getting in fairly close. I'm going to have another vignette edge. I do like these loose edges. Totally up to you, though. You can go right up. Um, to a 
a hard edge if you wish. And to give myself extra time with the background, I can treat this in two separate sections. So though I do want the background colour to come through the mesh of um, the feeder that the bird is sitting on, I can deal with that separately. So I'm going to just concentrate on the outside um, area first. So this is just clean water uh, applied with a large brush. And then with a smaller brush, I can cut in closer to the bird, okay, so that um, I'm going to, when the colour goes down, I can cut in really quite close but not over the bird. So two brushes for this and that will just open the fibres of the paint painting and give me a bit more time when I'm dropping my colours in. So lightest colour first, I'm going to drop in a few patches of my uh, yellow. There will be some tipping of the paper involved in this as well to blur stuff together. So I'm just going to do the odd patch of yellow and then go straight into my mid green and drop that in. And get onto the tipping of the paper. I want to blur the colours together. So I want this to be an out of focus background. see where I need to go back in and feed more yellow in close to the to the bird there's patches where the color hasn't run my mixes are fairly strong color hasn't run in down here around Base. So again, blend together, pick up more green, touch in a bit more green, lead together again. And while you've got shine on the paper, you can continue to do this, but I have got a much deeper green mixed which I do want to put in because that will give a bit of drama behind particularly the lighter parts of the um, where the bird is quite quite light so contrast is is good so I'm gonna have some patches of much darker in fact I think where the head of the bird is that might look quite good and um, down this belly section. I'm going to go back to my yellow again. The important thing is that this needs to be a fairly thick mix of colour so that you don't get cauliflowers appearing. So I'm going to put a bit more, a few more patches of yellow. And bleed again. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and see what I've got. Now if it dries too light I can re-wet and, um, and then drop some more colour in. So I'm just going to be patient now and let it dry. What you may have to do is if little pools of colour appear, 
clean your brush off and just use your a damp brush just to mop up any puddles of colour. Okay, so that's the next stage. As you can see, um, what I've done is while the background section was was drying completely, I've gone into uh, the sort of the mesh basket where the, the uh, bird was sitting and I've used exactly the same greens uh, except this time because it was a smaller area I didn't wet the paper and therefore the greens have dried slightly darker which is actually what I wanted uh, so those areas were done as sort of three small in uh, wet in wet sections done exactly the same as the background but one at a time um, and I'll come back and concentrate on the feeder later so now it's time to start the bird itself. All my colours are mixed uh, ahead and I'm going to start with the head of the bird and I'm beginning with the palest yellows. So I've got a couple of brushes ready to work with. So I've got about a size 7 and about a size 3 uh, and I'm going to start at the head of the bird and begin to drop the colour in, the palest ones first. So um, we'll start with getting some of the lightest yellow in place. So I'm going to begin with my, my lemon yellow wash and work my way back around the head of the bird. There are a few areas which are really pale. At the moment I'm going to leave them white, but I may need to go back and tint them the white later on. Now as I come back around this top section, the colour changes slightly to this really soft um, greyish green and I've used my grey mix and my green mix together and I'm just going to touch that in wet in wet and bring that round the back of the bird's head. Some of these washes may have to go darker later but this is my sort of base if you like and I'm just avoiding a light patch above the bird's eye. There is a, a really dark bit, but I can actually take that wash over, over the whole section and come back with deeper colour later on. So I'm going to wash that back. And then the colour changes again and goes back to the yellow. So I'm going to pick the yellow up on my brush. Make sure that it's not too runny because um, I don't want it to bleed too far, so I've thickened the mix up a little bit and I'm going to touch it in to that edge of that wet greeny grey and then fade it, fade it down, just use a little bit of water. So we're trying to do everything really really soft and there's a little hint of yellow just coming in at the end here. Now I'm going to leave that section to dry because I've got a much darker bit and I don't want to put that in so that it rushes up so I'm going to come around to the front of the bird's um, beak now and just come around here. Now this bit is darker but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the the lighter yellows on this side and work my round way round that way. So this is again my lemon yellow and I can wash that down, it's the pale lemon yellow. In fact I can take that over this entire area and I'm just going to flick the colour up to break it up onto that white section for the moment but it can come right the way through here and all the way again although this is much darker I can go over the top later on with darker colours where needed so I'm going to put the yellow as a base if you like and then there'll be deeper colours put on top so we'll sort of come to that section around there and then I've got my slightly stronger yellow which I've used gamboge and I'm just going to touch that in where I can see the yellow goes a little bit deeper so mini wet in wet if you like so just touch that in so it's all soft so I'm at the moment not defining individual feathers um, but just touching colour in 
Now over here it's dried slightly so I'm just going to use a little bit of water to fade that across. And when this is completely dried I'll be able to come over the top with my deeper colour. So I'm going to move up to a bigger brush and work these light colours in around the next section. So I'm going to come down onto the chest of the bird, go back to my pale lemon yellow and I'm going to run that around here. Again as a base, so nice big brush, I can take that over this whole chest area all the way down to the bottom. I've got the odd pale feather masked out to keep it white so I just need to watch where I come to so I'm going to come across here around the back of the bird again this is just the same diluted lemon yellow and then here with the tip of the brush I just want to flick the colour in around this section. Right now while this is wet I want to start introducing a little bit of some of my greens. So I've got for the shadow of the bird I just want to bring in some green underneath a couple of different tones move back to my smaller brush and then over this side. Now this has started to dry but that's okay because that whole part is in the shade. I will have to put a number of layers of colour on here, I know that. But I just want it to be, I'll pick up a bit of yellow on the brush and drop some yellow in just on the underside. And with my fine brush, make sure I go to the edges and just flip the colour to the edge. into the top of the bird's leg as well. I'll do the same up here. With a tiny brush, move down to a really small brush and break up that top line. Now I've got a puddle of colour forming at the bottom so again just use the brush, mop up the excess and while this is wet I've got my darkest green mix which has got that little hint of orange in it and I'm going to drop that in even at this stage. It won't be dark enough ultimately but it will just begin to introduce a bit of warmth on that shadowed side. So again remember that this has to be mixed relatively thick so that I don't get cauliflowers appearing everywhere. I think I will leave that section to see how it dries and while that's drying I can come back up and get the lightest colours onto the back of the bird's wing 
over on this side. So I'm going to go back to my lemon yellow, introduce that as my pale base colour. Bring that all the way down. And while that is still wet, touch in a little hint of green just off the tip of the brush. Coming round sort of in an arc. The colour is going to run, but I don't want to lose all of the yellow, particularly the bit that's close to the that kind of collar if you like. But it does get darker as it comes down towards the bottom so I can bring in more green here. Just make sure I've lost all the white that I don't don't want to have up in that section. And then there's just this piece here which is actually shaded and now that I think, just check that that's dry, I can come in with that green where there's a bit of shadow now. I'm just going to paint the whole of that in and then using a tiny brush break up the edge to give the impression of the feathers. Let's pull the colour in. And then really, apart from watching to see if there's any puddles, and if there is, just mopping the colour up, if it forms a puddle, I need to let that dry and see what I've got. Uh, the washes on the bird have dried now and the only other thing that I've done is just put the palest uh, raw sienna wash on the beak which again I've allowed to dry so that I can come back later and add um, some tone onto that. But I'm now going to go back up to the head of the bird and start to concentrate because we stopped short here and didn't take those greenish shadows down onto the sort of the throat area. So I'm going to use my uh, muted green and go in with that right from the base of the beak and again just be really careful I can put a sort of a fairly solid wash down initially I need to look at where the shadow stops which is around about there and then I've got a, again my fine brush which I can use to take the flick the colour away to cover all my light because that whole section of the throat is in the shade. I want to work relatively quickly because again I've got my warmer green that's got a touch of orange in it which I want to drop in wet in wet so I can't hang about because this will dry. So I'm gonna pick some of that color up and touch that in now. And just make sure that I take that quite the way over. And then again, pick my green up and make sure that that is flipped onto around the, well, sort of around the edge of that light patch. And then again, just touching some of that warmer color. Come through. Just trying to look carefully where that shadow comes down to before it disappears. And it 
starts to fade away. So what I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit, make the green slightly more yellowy. And with the fine brush, just do a few small bits of wash. some grey to drop into this later I think. In fact I might even, I've got it mixed so I might even just introduce a little bit of that now where it's soft. There we go. see how that dries but I've got that grey so what I can do is start bringing the markings around the bottom section here so again that can just mix with the green that I've got down and I just want to flick it up this is actually slightly bit, uh, slightly too grey, I think, but too blue. So I'm just going to add a little touch more neutral in, so that it's not quite so, quite so blue. And it varies. It's not a thick band. It, it varies as it goes round the neck of the bird darker sort of immediately underneath that yellow collar if you like and then it fades out so what I'll do is I'll just pick up a bit of water and pull the colour down with some water on my fine brush There's a little hint of green in it as well, so I might just touch that, touch that in. And there will be sections I think that will need to go darker, so I can do that later. So I can come round here now, and I think we've got this grey that needs to come. But it's quite soft. So again, using water to just blur it out. Pull it down with the water. So that way we've lost the white that we don't want, but hopefully sort of got something relatively subtle. Um, I think I need to go slightly paler around there. A bit more water. Just to fade it round the back of the bird's head. Take a little bit of slightly stronger mix and the 
this is almost dried here and I can put in one or two slightly darker strokes with the brush. I think what I'm going to do is mix it with a little bit of very dark green so that it's not too black because these are the baby birds so their colour isn't as intense as the adult birds. Just need to wash something that's a little bit stronger. Here, yeah, that's dried a bit too pale, so I can go over with a second layer. And again, just use water to fade it down. Right. I need to let that bit dry so that I'm not putting my hand through it so that I can come up and work around this section, but I can let that section dry. While that's drying, if you need to put any deeper greens on the back of the bird, this would be the opportunity. So um, I need to just come in. I've moved up to a size three or four brush and I'm just going to come a little bit darker just on the edge here. There's a bit of shadow being cast um, so I just want to round the bird out so I'm going to put that little bit of shadow let it run in to the edge of the wing. And there's some dark underneath. A bit of cold shadow under there. Again, we'll see how that dries. Right, I've just got to be patient, let that dry. The next thing to consider is to move down to the legs of the bird. And um, there is strong shadow on the legs of the bird, but the, there's this sort of bluey grey. So again, I'm going to stick with the same blues that I've been working with, um, but lots of water, bluey grey, really pale. And I'm going to put my base wash, even though the tops of the legs are totally in the shade, I need to get that colour coming down and I'm just going to leave where the sunlight is brightest some areas of white. So I'm going to paint little bands of colour around the feet of the birds, around where the claws are, leaving just little strips and circles of white paper. Again just to give the impression of that texture leave a gap and then go on to the, the next toe and again little little bands coming round and then the last toe with the shape. Now this other leg is completely in the shadows so although it will need to go much darker so that I remember about my tonal values and linking everything together I'm just going to take that same bluey grey that I've been using and wash that over the entire claw. Just to make everything hang together. This really is a fairly limited palette of uh, painting. The colours I'm using, um, I'm mixing with for the entire picture more than, more or less. So um, 
that can now dry and I'll use this same bluey grey to put some texture on the rim of the uh, dish that the bird is sitting on. But I'll come back and do that later because my next stage, once everything's dry and I'm not going to put my hand through things, I'm going to concentrate on the head of the bird. Um, the washes have now dried over the, uh, the head of the bird, so I'm going to concentrate on the beak area and start building that up and around the eye. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start with the beak and um, on the left and work towards the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is, using a really small brush, start to put in some of the tone on top um, or underneath the lower part of the bill. So there's a little bit of shadow, pale shadow, so I'm going to use my grey and just put that section of the beak just lightly into a bit of shade. And use clean water to fade that across. I have to do this in sections because this now needs to needs to dry before I can put the darker markings on top. So I can go to the top of the bill and there's a little line of darker grey on the top. Not too dark that it's it's a really deep stripe and then a slightly paler bluey grey with a gap of white in between that sort of fades down towards that bit of raw sienna that I put down. So I need to again just use a bit of water to get the shape. It sort of curves round, straight on the top and then curves round at the base of the bill. Right, and then while that's wet it needs to be a little bit darker towards the bottom so I can just pop in some darker grey and let that lead across. And then I think, I hope, the bottom section has dried so I'm just going to take some darker grey and off my tiny brush and hopefully I can put the darkest bit in now on the lower section. I'm using an absolutely tiny brush to do this because you just can't get the control. Ah, oh, no, that's too wet. Right, that's bled across so I'm just going to blot that off that's okay, just leave that to dry completely. So I'll come back to that. It's just still a tiny bit of wet on there and I'll come back to that in a moment. So what I'm gonna do now is to move along here towards the eye, uh, still sticking with this fine brush and there's a few sort of stray loose feathers which I'm going to paint to flick with the tip of the brush to get those, break up that edge and then wash in the grey. Again, not too dark at this stage because I can come on top with some darker greys, but break the edges again to give the impression that I'm painting feathers in lots of detail, which I'm not, um, and really look at the way that these feathers it's not smooth and it goes towards the eye, the positioning of the eye, but there's little gaps in there so I'm going to let the white paper come through and take some very fine marks just round underneath the eye and then let it fade away. And just above the eye to actually get it to sit into the socket, there's, again, we've got some feather work just above. So I'm gonna take a fine line of color above the eye. And in fact, it's got a little hint of green in there. So 
and mix the green and the grey together and flick the colour up into there. So what we're basically trying to do is to create a little sort of socket and indentation and um, right below the eye are some broken bits of dark. So again, on my tiny brush, this is a zero. I'm just going to do a few marks. Not a solid line, a little broken, almost like a line of dots, just to indicate the edge of the eye. Then, the first layer of the actual eyeball. Now, in order to give the eye a bit of sheen to it, what I'm actually going to do is to mix a um, something very dark like a sepia in with some dark grey um, and that will be layer number one. So I'm just going to get a, uh, a mix of a nice strong mix of sepia, combine it with some neutral and again off of my small brush put that down so it'll give a warm base and I'm going to paint that in, making sure I have drawn a faint pencil line for a highlight. Now the highlight is quite large at the moment, but it's better to do that because you will end up going in further than you intend. So if I make my highlight larger, when my hand wobbles a bit, it won't matter because I can, I've got a bit of leeway. So I need to take the dark above that highlight and all the way around. And what I hope is as soon as you get this first stage of the eye in, the bird is gonna start having a bit of character. trying to be as steady as I possibly can to get the shape. Now I'm going to let that dry <clears throat> and then what I may have to do is go back with a little bit of deeper tone but meanwhile I can come across to the right hand side for the shadowed area and again this time I'm going to go back to combining um, with uh, a bit of green with my dark and coming across just leaving a little touch of light above the eye. And I'll start off by using this small brush. And then again, still with grey. So it's this green, dark green and grey, using them both. So I'll pick up a bit more water. So it's not flat, it's not a totally flat wash. And that needs to come back and run into the section we've already painted. I'm going to pick up the dark, bleed some of that in again. back to the front here and put in a few more darker bits of grey. Now that that first layer has dried. I'm going to go back to this section 
and again this is still a bit wet so I've mixed a deeper neutral and I can just drop that in it's just a little bit more pigment so it's a slightly stronger mix and again slightly stronger with the green drop that in The end of the beak, now that's dry, I can go back where it ran before, I can go back and put that bit of dark in that I couldn't control before. And I'm just going to use a tiny, tiny bit of water to fade that in. Now there's the faintest line between the sections of the bill so again using a light brown I'm going to hint at that line of the bill but I don't want to define it too much. And now um, I can see, as I've built that section up, I just need to darken a few places on the uh, where the yellow is, at, up here, around the base. So I'm just going back in with my gamboge and just putting some slightly deeper yellow. to where I want to fade it out slightly. And again, the greeny grey, which I washed in, I can now just emphasise that a little bit more, just on the crown of the bird's head. Again, a bit of water just to soften it as it comes backwards. The feathers are going uh, towards the right. So just taking that out a little bit of direction and as we come down towards the markings, dark markings that we've just put in, a little bit more. Again, this is just enough to show the direction that the feathers are falling without painting every single detail in. I just keep loading my brush up so that I'm not uh, dragging paint. So all the time you're assessing where you need to adjust the colour, but it's really subtle, making sure that you've loaded your brush with enough colour. Right, a little bits there. Now, I want to leave that area to dry completely. I do have to go into this white patch below the eye and get a little bit of tone in there and a little bit of tone up there. So those white patches do need to um, be dealt with. 
but that's got to dry completely. So I'm gonna come down to the rim here, move up to a larger brush, about a size six or seven, and again, uh, start off by putting uh, blue gray down onto the rim of the, as a base, if you like, onto this rim that the bird's sitting on. So I'm just going to load my brush. Now the back of the rim is fairly shadowed, so I don't want to go too light with that. So this just becomes my base wash. Again, I'll use that same colour, although ultimately it will need to go darker, but I can take that right the way around. So we're getting rid of the white paper at this stage. Now as we come towards the front, there is more light falling. So what I want to do is have tone on the back of the rim there, and then move to a smaller brush. And I'm gonna use the water to just break up the edge, soften it very slightly and then bring in some tone down the bottom and again use water on that edge, clean water and hopefully we're going to start getting the effect of the rim going round so I'll do the same along this larger section, load my brush with colour and sort of paint a, paint a band it goes all the way along, right up to the bird's claw, wash the brush off and then with clean water on the brush, paint a line of water to make the colour start to bleed downwards. And I'll do the same on the lower section, band of this blue-grey. taking some water, soften it with clean water. Okay. So we're beginning to get a turn on the rim. So now all of the white paper that I don't want to be there has been dealt with. I am going to have to start darkening everything but I just want to, I don't want to put my hand through anything so far so I'm just going to leave this for two minutes to dry off. I've now removed all of the masking fluid that I'd put down so there are little white areas which I will come back and tint but I'm going to go back and do the last bits that I intend to do up onto the head of the bird. So I've got some really pale blue mixed very, very light Windsor blue, and I'm just going to put a hint of blue on the top of the edge of the beak. You just get the palest, palest blue catching there. And that same blue I'm going to use to um, go over part of the highlight of the eye. Okay, and just a little bit of that and let it merge in I'm pulling it so that some of the dark uh, works its way in. And then using my tiny brush, I've got some very, very dark uh, colour and I'm just going to work some really deep grey. You won't see the benefit of this until it's totally dry, but I've got some very thick grey and I'm just going to work that in a, uh, an arc around the eye which will hopefully when it's dry just give a little bit more depth to the bird's eye. I'll go into the corner and then I'm going to leave that. Uh, this little piece of white that's just above the eye is too white so I'm going to take some of my lemon yellow, dilute it down with a huge amount of water and on my tiny brush I'm just going to tint parts of it so that it's not bright white. Not all over but just some of it 
so that the whiteness has gone off of parts of it a little bit around the end here and then I need to come underneath the eye and this will take a little bit of time I've got some grey diluted with lots of water so that it's extremely pale and again off of this size zero brush I want to get some shape into this white section so I'm just going to use the tip of the brush and this highly diluted light grey and I'm going to paint a few texture marks for the direction of the feathers to break that area up. A bit too dark. It should be really pale and not lose all of the white but just enough to give a bit of form within that and while I've got that grey on the brush I can then go up and put some light grey into that little bit above the eye just on the bottom Okay, moving along, these pieces here where the uh, white, the masking fluid was removed and it's left it absolutely white. Again, very pale bit of uh, lemon yellow and I'm just going to run a touch of lemon yellow on them to take the edge off the brightness of the white. As we come down here onto the chest of the bird, again, those have been removed, they're white, so I'm now going to just get some lemon yellow and, in fact, I'm not going to lose all of the white, but I'm just going to take part of it away. A little flicks of lemon yellow in there, and hopefully this will give the effect of the light catching on the chest of the bird. work my way down right. and this section here again where I masked out I'm going to do some of the light yellow and some very pale greens as well I think but I'll start off with that lemon yellow just coming off the tip of the brush and then some very pale green Again, the same green I have been using but diluted down with more water and I'm just going to do the odd little bit with, with the pale green. There we go. Now there's a tiny bit of shadow being cast underneath by that bit of wing. So I'm going to take the green down in a little little line and again just water it away. 
And the other thing I've noticed as I've been looking at this is that uh, I need to just bring a hint more yellow. So I'm going to go back to my lemon yellow and make a thin wash. I'm going to bring a little wash of lemon yellow through underneath here, hopefully to bring the, sort of the that brighter yellow through a bit more. On this side of the bird, the uh, the dark that comes in again to give a touch of texture, I'm going to just use my slightly darker green and do the odd few marks off of a size. Well, this is about size six six brush. stopping to load myself up with a little bit more colour. All this will do really is to just give the bird a bit more three dimension. Bring it round as you're, as you're painting. I'll do some marks with a, my smaller brush as well. go too far with it it should just dry it enough but I will actually put some on my tiny brush and flick a few more out for where the young bird is so fluffy that you see it against the background colour break up that edge with a bit of fluff. Okay, I think that's all right. Um, now, any more. I don't want to go too, too much with this before I move, move on to the legs area. Just the odd concentration now will be on the rim of the uh, of the little dish the bird's sitting on and getting some of these shadows into uh, to push these legs and claws away so back to my really dark grey and I'm going to run this right over that left leg as we're looking at it One thing I have done is I've just put a little bit of that blue and highlighted some areas on the foot first uh, to bring a bit of the blue forward. So the whole of that section of the leg is shaded. So I need to put that all in the shade and then pull some of that round the side of the leg. so that the shadow goes under the claw and I'm going to use a little bit of water to soften so that it's not a sharp line too much. Back to the fine brush. And this is what we're trying to do is really anchor the bird down. So again, 
again. A bit of water just to work it in a little bit. There's shadow being cast across the rim, so I need to get that. And the back of that foot is, is there as well, so I need to get that in. Look at that claw. And then the shadow that's being cast, which isn't a totally straight line wobbles round and then fades as it comes round the edge there and then there's a bit more shadow coming into that claw which I need to wash across. Do the other leg and then look at see and see how that matches up. Although I'm not sure I've quite got the shape right on the back of the floor. I think there's more shape going around. Okay, now this one, back to my big brush to cover the area. I've got to put this completely in the shadows. leg is and then I'm going to pick up the dark green and actually run the dark green down the front of the leg that in so that it's bleeding across a little bit. So you have a very slightly lighter uh, one side to the other. Now there is shadow which is catching about there. So quickly picking up some water on my brush, I'm going to get this to all bleed together. So wet that area and then back to my grey. Pick some grey up and paint some strips in. And then use a bit of water. section and just at the back and get this side into the shadows and again pick up a little bit of the green Well, I've got the green on the brush. I'm 
water. So this is trying to link the colours across the painting, just make it a little bit more interesting. Bring some of that green through into the rim here, picking up water. The last bit is the back and that's got some dark grey and I'm also going to have some very dark green as well so I'll put some dark grey down across and kind of let them merge together. I need to go a tiny bit darker at the top of the bird's leg. So where it goes off into the shadows. To get a little bit more coming through into there. I think we're going to go back to the front of the leg, put a dark line down. just leaves me with the finishing touches so I'm going to let that dry before I do the last remaining touches. Now we're on the uh, final stages of the painting. Uh, just a couple of things that um, I have done um, that just wanted to point out. I've put a little bit of texture on the rim at the front here um, to make a bit of interest in the foreground so I've just used some uh, light bluey greys and literally stippled a bit of texture on to bring uh, that out uh, towards you. I've also put a few darks onto the uh, right hand claw of the bird uh, just to give a bit of, of that sort of texture of the, of the leg and the claw even though in fact in the photograph you can't really see that but I think it does actually help to echo some of the texture marks on the left leg. Uh, so the final part really of this is to concentrate on getting the effect of the wire sort of bird feeder. Um, I've done the foreground to give you an idea of what it looks like. I've combined together a really dark green and uh, a neutral. You could use Payne's grey, you could use indigo, you could use a combination with some sepia in there. Anything that's really, really dark. And what I've done is I have uh, drawn myself a few lines to get the perspective right as it goes round and I haven't done a continual line I've done a broken line but just to get this grid of the um, of the edge of the feeder so I'm going to concentrate on the last stage which is uh, the, the mesh inside so what I've been doing is not drawing every single line but I wanted to get some of the arcs right so that I know where I want to go with the lines of perspective. So just in pencil I've sketched in a few of the angles that I want to follow so that I uh, don't go too far astray and I'm going to use a small brush, uh, this is a size 4 and again similar uh, colour to what I used at the front and um, I'm going to really alternate between a size 4 and a size 2 um, to get some of this mesh effect in position. So load the brush with colour and um, I'm going to start on the left hand side 
and although I haven't drawn every single bit of mesh, a slightly sort of wobbly line that will just give me the direction that I want to go and slightly broken as well. It does look better if it's not a complete line I think. The pencil lines are there just to guide the angle that I want to work at. I'll be going first one way and then when it's dry I can go back and go the other way to get that uh, grid effect. just keep glancing between the photograph uh, that I'm working from and my painting. To look at the spacing, because the spacing does alter. And sometimes the, uh, the grid sort of gets transparent. So I've got to now follow through onto the other side. Okay, once that's dry, you can come back the other way. And it's pretty warm in here at the moment, so I think it's probably dry enough for me to, to come back um, across this way with the, the, the mesh. Uh, I think the most sensible thing is for me to start at the bottom. And in fact, I can't see a, a line till I get to about there. gap here where the curve changes shape or changes direction I should say. Right now I don't want this to look too stark so I'm going to get some water on the brush and I'm just going to brush water over the top 
and let it sit there and soften in a bit. In fact, I'll go to an even bigger brush. I'll move up brush sizes. Just put some water on the top. Because I think it would look quite nice for it not to be as sharp on the inside of the basket as it is on the outside. And towards the bottom, I'm going to just drop in a bit more dark at the bottom of the basket. It, you can't really define almost the difference between the leg of the bird and the inside so I'm just going to drop in some of that dark green. The last little thing that I'm going to do is use my dark green to just flick up onto the underside of the bird. just to like break the plumage up. Keep everything nice and soft. I think that's done. <laughs>